In this episode, I'm going to talk about Nash equilibrium. It's one of the most important solution concept. And up until this point, we talked about a uh, solution concept, uh, which was the maximum strategies and the maximum value for two person zero sum games. And then we talked about solution concepts for uh, the different games, non-zero sum games and more than two players. And we defined the concepts of a uh, concept of uh, dominant strategy equilibrium. It's very strong, but it's too demanding. So many games do not have uh, dominant strategy equilibrium. And then we talked about iterated elimination of strictly dominated strategies. And if the game is solvable, well, then the resulting strategies and the profile of strategies uh, uh, is, is the solution. Um, so that's the, the third one. And then this is the fourth one. So the, why we need it? Well, because many games are non-zero sum and uh, many games do not have dominant strategy equilibrium or many games are not solvable. For example, uh, the matching pennies, all right? So for those, or uh, the battle of the sexes. So for those games, we have a stronger equilibrium concept. This Nash equilibrium concept is not as intuitive as the others, but it's nevertheless uh, the, the most meaningful equilibrium concept we have. So a strategy profile, uh, sigma, one, sigma star, which consists of n strategies, mixed strategies, sigma one star, sigma two star, up to sigma n star, is called Nash equilibrium if and only if for every player i, sigma i star is the best response to his opponent's strategy, sigma minus i star. So each player is best responding his or her opponent's strategy, okay? Alternatively, sigma star is in Nash equilibrium if and only for every player i. Playing the strategy sigma i star is the best thing you can do, but don't forget, fixing that the other's strategies are playing sigma minus i star, all right? So be careful. Sigma i star may not be better than all the other strategies you have if your opponents play something totally different than sigma minus i star, all right? So in this profile of strategy, in this strategy profile, once I fix my opponent's strategy, the question is, am I best responding my opponents or not, all right? Well, the Nash equilibrium, uh, this is a mixed strategy Nash equilibrium. The pure strategy Nash equilibrium is simple. It's just exactly the same definition, but we, we, we use the pure strategies, okay? Um, so there's nothing uh, special about pure strategy Nash equilibrium. Um, at first, it may be unreasonable or too complicated to understand Nash equilibrium, but it's actually a quite intuitive. It is uh, some kind of a stability concept. Um, it's a concept where, uh, where uh, once players learn, so remember this is a simultaneous move game, so players choose their actions or strategies simultaneously, and then they learn uh, what each player played, and then the payoffs. Well, once they learn what they played, well, the thing is, if they play, if each strategy play uh, the Nash equilibrium strategy, well, then none of them are going to be shocked about the outcome. And none of them are going to regret from his or her actions. They're not gonna say, shoot, I should have played something else. Why? Well, because once I learn my other opponent's strategies, I, 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 I already best responded them. I mean, I, I did my best given my opponent's strategy, all right? So therefore, once I learn the outcome, I'm not gonna regret it, all right? Or think it this way. A Nash equilibrium strategy profile is a profile where if players learn what their opponents are going to play, all right, somehow they, they get this information before they choose their actions, well, they're not going to be surprised. They're not going to change their strategies because According, in, in, in the Nash equilibrium strategy profile, they are best responding their opponents anyhow, okay? Um, well, the important thing is, the, if a strategy, a mixed strategy is a Nash equilibrium strategy for some player I, and if two pure strategies are in the support, well then the utilities of these two pure strategies must be the same. 
All right, that basically comes from the fact that the sigma i star is the best response. All right, previously we already argued this. But once again, please don't forget the, uh, the utilities of uh, pure strategy si and si prime may be different if the opponents play something else. But the thing is, this equivalence is true under the assumption that the opponents are going to stick to playing sigma minus i star. Okay? So that's, that's very important. So there are a few important remarks that I want to do, and actually their proofs are pretty straightforward. So I'd leave them as an exercise. The first remark is that if a strategy profile sigma star is a dominant strategy equilibrium, remember the dominant strategy is like the best strategy for the player, regardless of what the others do. Well, if a strategy profile is a dominant strategy equilibrium, well then, you know what? It is also a Nash equilibrium, okay? The converse of this statement is not true, meaning there are many Nash equilibrium where the strategies are not dominant strategy, okay? Well, what else? If the game is a solvable game uh, by iterated elimination of strictly dominated strategies and sigma star, the strategy profile, is the profile of strategies that survive the iterated elimination of strictly dominated strategies, well then you know what? The sigma, sigma star is also a Nash equilibrium. Once again, the converse is not always true. What else? Suppose that the game G is a two-player zero-sum game and sigma star is the maximum strategy for each player, all right? So each player is playing his or her maximum strategies according to this strategy profile. Well, then you know what? Sigma star is also Nash equilibrium, all right? And by the way, the converse of this statement is true. If the game G is a two-person zero-sum game, well, then if sigma star is a Nash equilibrium, well, um, there exists payoff equivalent version of another Nash equilibrium where that Nash equilibrium, each player is playing maximum strategy. So the converse is true, but the details are slightly uh, different. All right, so I, I just leave it, uh, the arrow one-sided. And then finally, if a strategy as i is a dominated strategy for player i in any game, well then there cannot exist a Nash equilibrium of this game where player i plays some mixed strategy where he plays this pure strategy as i with a positive probability. All right, so if a strategy is a dominated strategy for you, playing this strategy with a positive probability, even if it is very, very small, is never, never optimal. It will never be best response, all right? Um, once again, all these arguments are very straightforward to prove. In fact, I proved and argued some of those statements in my previous uh, videos. So I, I leave them to you as an exercise, but trust me, they are very nice, uh, uh, useful exercises. I'm going to finish this episode uh, by giving you three important uh, existence theorems. So the question is, uh, can we be sure whether a Nash equilibrium uh, exists or not in, in, in a game? Well, the answer is positive under some assumptions, obviously. So the first theorem is proved uh, by John Nash in 1950. So the 50s were, at least the early 50s, were a very uh, productive uh, uh, term for the existence theorem. So the Nash theorem is, says the following. So for every finite strategic form game, so what do we mean by finite strategic form game? The set of players is finite and each player has a finitely many available strategies. Uh, so every finite strategic form game has at least one mixed strategy Nash equilibrium. It may have a pure strategy, but it will definitely have one Nash equilibrium, maybe in mixed strategies, maybe in pure. We don't know that, but there's going to be at least one Nash equilibrium. Obviously, John Nash doesn't call it Nash equilibrium. All right. Um, well, in 1953, another uh, sort of a strong theorem was proven. So consider any game with n many players, S being the set of strategy profiles and UI are the payoff functions. 
So here we have more specific assumptions. So SI has to be non-empty. Right? I mean, if it is empty, again, it's not really a game. Uh, it doesn't have to be uh, finite, but it has to be compact. All right? So it's closed and bounded. So compact subsets of a metric space. And if the payoff functions are continuous, well, then there's a, they exist a mixed strategy Nash equilibrium, all right? at least one. All right? so again, the Nash equilibrium may be in pure strategies, may be in mixed strategies, we don't know that, but we can be sure that there's going to be at least one Nash equilibrium. Again, if payoffs are continuous, and then the, the domain, the strategy sets are compact. Right? Um, so finite sets are also compact on their metric spaces, by the way. So basically, um, um, uh, the, this, this theorem implies Nash's theorem. Obviously, it comes three years later. And the reason is when the game is a finite game, uh, obviously the expected utility function is a continuous function. And as I said, the finite sets uh, are compact subsets of metric spaces. All right, what else? The, 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 the next theorem, uh, says more about whether we have a pure strategy in Nash equilibrium. So again, consider any uh, normal form or strategic form game where the strategy sets for each player are non-empty, compact, and convex. Right? So that's important. So another addition here. Uh, subsets of some Euclidean space. And the utility functions are continuous. And on top of that, they are continuous on strategy profiles, S, and they are quasi-concave in SI. So quasi-concavity is sort of a weaker condition than concavity, all right? So player I, uh, so if he uses higher strategies, or higher strategy means what? The, the strategies can be ranked, obviously, right? So the higher strategies, and I'm just giving you interpretation, higher strategies are going to give you higher utility, but the rate of, so it's, it's going to increase in a concave fashion. But overall, your utility function do not have to be, does not have to be concave because uh, uh, your utility function also depends on the other guy's strategies. All right, so therefore it is continuous on strategy profile, but it's quasi-concave on your own strategy. Well, then there exists at least one pure strategy Nash equilibrium. All right, so that's 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 very, very nice result. It, it is not a mixed strategy, but it's a, a pure strategy. And in order to, you know, what is guaranteeing the pure strategy? The convexity of the strategy space and the quasi-concavity of the uh, utility function. All right. Well, out of those three, we are going to prove the Nash uh, existence theorem because it teaches us uh, some very basic fundamental facts. Um, and so I am going to prove the Nash's theorem in the next episode.